64 East in Louisville remains closed at Grinstead after a deadly pileup this morning just outside the Cochrane Hill tunnels. We know a semi driver died in that wreck involving two semis, a garbage truck and two passenger cars. Our Jim Stratman has followed the story all morning long, sharing the latest on what happened. Before sunrise, fire on the horizon. Our Trimark cameras spotting flames and heavy smoke looming over I-64 eastbound with lights and sirens flooding onto the interstate. LNPD says around 5.30, five vehicles, two semis, a garbage truck, and two cars collided and each caught fire. The circumstances leading up to that crash are still being investigated. Louisville Fire arrived on scene and began attacking the flames, but Chief Brian O'Neill said this morning presented problems they don't normally have to face. If you think about the way that we respond to these structure fires, you'll see all the hoses out. Uh, we don't have hydrants on the interstate. When you've got multiple vehicles that are on fire, water supply becomes an issue, uh, but our crews were able to get up there, get some unconventional ways of getting water to put out those fires. Like torching their own hoses. That's what we uh, lovingly call the red dragon. Specifically, it's there so we can thaw out a hydrant. Sometimes we'll uh, uh, encounter a hydrant that has been frozen up. So we have a propane tank with a little bit of a kind of a improvised flamethrower to try to thaw it out so we can keep water flowing. That smoke continued to rise for the better part of four hours. LNPD confirming a semi driver died at the scene and three other drivers were taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. The LMPD traffic unit is taking the lead on this investigation. In Louisville, Jim Stratman, WHAS 11, on your side. The Louisville Metro Police Foundation is raising money to help one of its sergeants. After being shot in 2021, Chris Lane is now facing the loss of his wife, who died in a car crash over the weekend. Police said Lane's wife, Erin Dita, was hit on uh, Taylorsville Lake Road Saturday night hit head on. Their 14 year old daughter was also hurt but expected to recover from her injuries. The couple has also a 10 year old son. Sergeant Lane was shot in the face in November of 2021 while working off duty in a construction zone when another man was also killed. The executive director of the Metro Police Foundation said they helped that family then and will do the same now. Police officers give up holidays with their families. They give up time with their families so that we can be safe, so that we can celebrate with our families. And now we can step in and we can support him while he remembers and honors his wife. Aaron Dita was a bilingual instructor at JCPS, most recently working at Chansey Elementary in Eastern Jefferson County. If you'd like to help this family, we do have a link to that fundraiser online at whas11.com. Clark County prosecutors say the wife of former sheriff Jamie Knoll could be charged in his case involving misconduct while in office. That announcement was made during Knoll's court hearing yesterday with Misty Knoll sitting right behind him. Jamie Knoll faces 15 felony charges ranging from official misconduct to theft and tax evasion. Prosecutors did not specify what kind of charges they could bring against Misty, instead looking for guidance on how to bring them because there's a special judge in her husband's case. Defense attorney Larry Wilder objected to an arrest when jurisdiction and bond were not clear. Just to punish them in advance seems a little bit like a strategy that is outside the bounds of all of the trial rules that have been invoked by the Supreme Court. The defense is also appealing Knoll's initial bond decision, which he's already paid. The decision goes to the Indiana Court of Appeals. Seymour Indiana police say a boy was found dead inside of a car with an unresponsive woman. The two were found on Shields Avenue shortly after 8 yesterday morning. Police said the woman was taken to the hospital, but they haven't said much else like her condition or how the boy died. We'll stay on that case. Here in Kentucky, state house leaders have revealed their proposed budgets for the coming year. And while they do prioritize a boost to educational funding, they don't go as far as to guarantee teacher raises. The GOP budget proposal calls for more money to both the state's funding formula for K through 12 schools and for student transportation. If passed, it would be up to the districts to decide how to spend the increase in funding. Well, in Governor Andy Bashir's proposal, he'd asked for an 11% raise for teachers and universal pre K. Instead of preschool, Republican lawmakers are calling for additional funds to maintain higher reimbursement for providers. House Speaker David Osborne said lawmakers will strongly suggest to administrators that school personnel deserve and need those raises. 
The countdown to Kentucky Derby 150 is on with 107 days until the run for the Roses. Just days after that, we have the PGA Championship over at Valhalla. Leaders of both Churchill Downs and the PGA of America shared the stage last night at a Greater Louisville Inc. meeting, giving us a look at the huge impact these two events will bring to our city. Alex Dieterer and photojournalist Addie Hill were there. The 150th Kentucky Derby, the first Saturday in May, and then 10 days later, the PGA Championship returns to Valhalla, the first time since 2014. The sold out 106th championship, once again returning to the major championship venue of the Bluegrass. Uh, we want to be, you know, part of, we want the Valhalla to be a part of our rota going forward. PGA of America CEO Seth Wall. You know, we want to be the best partner that anybody's ever had and, and we want to get invited back. But will the championship ever return? The PGA no longer owns Valhalla. Plus, the major is already scheduled in cities through 2030 and Louisville not on the list. This is the first time we've ever been here in May, so we, we haven't been able to share the stage with, with uh, Churchill Downs, but we're excited to do that. The attendance record at the Derby was set back in 2015 with 170,500 fans when American Pharoah won. We've already seen in just some of our preliminary metrics that uh, Derby 150 is going to take it to another level. So what's going to happen for 150? I'm not exactly sure what the final numbers will look like, but it's going to be really spectacular. While the numbers are still out on the 150th, Wall says the PGA is estimating 200,000 fans, $200 million in economic impact, and $5 billion for charity, when the championship once again graces Valhalla. Alex Dieterer, WHAS 11, on your side. The Kentucky Derby is Saturday, May 4th, followed by the PGA Championship Monday, May 13th. 